All right, the first round of 9000 series CPUs from AMD is here. The first two to hit shelves are the Ryzen 7 9700X and the Ryzen 5 9600X. I'm still working on my 9600X benchmark, so today I'm doing a Ryzen 7 showdown between the 9700X and its closest competitors on the AM5 platform, which are the 7700X, its direct predecessor, and the 7800X 3D, which has been widely regarded as the best gaming CPU on the market. And spoiler alert, it still is, but the gap is a lot smaller than you might think, and the 9700X leads in pretty much every other metric, power efficiency, thermals, and compute performance. It makes you scratch your head and go, is a few extra frames really worth all the baggage that comes with the 7800X 3D? Yes! 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 All right, all right, forget I asked, jeez. At least watch the video first. Before we continue, this video is brought to you in part by cdkeyoffer.com. So I have three desktop PCs that I regularly bounce between, and all of them are running activated copies of Windows from keys that I got on cdkeyoffer.com. I've used many key sites in the past, but CD Key Offer is the only one I've never had an issue with. I've never had a bad key. I've never had to call customer service. I've never had to email customer support, and I've never had to activate Windows over a phone, which is super fun. Right now, you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for around 22 bucks, but wait, add it to your cart. Use the 25% discount code BW20 at checkout, and the price drops to just $16.93. Buy Grabthar's Hammer, what a savings. To use your new key, just go to your purchased orders from the drop-down menu to view and copy the key once you get there, and then paste that key into the Windows activation page. Voila! You've got an activated OS that's also eligible for a free upgrade to Windows 11. Alternatively, you can skip the upgrade and buy Windows 11 Pro directly using the same code BW20 to snag the OS for around 23 bucks. Activate the key using the aforementioned steps and get the full Windows experience easily and affordably. Thanks again to cvkeyoffer.com. Now back to the main video. Not everyone's gonna be happy about this, but one thing I'm not testing today are Intel CPUs. The chips that I would have used in this video, like the 14700K, are so effed up and unreliable that I can't even recommend them right now. I'm currently in the process of building a system for a friend who's been a longtime Intel user, and last week he was like, please don't put that shit in my build. So if I won't even drop a defective CPU into a motherboard, I'm not gonna benchmark it as if it's worth someone's money. I will gladly start testing Intel chips again once they stop failing and dying on a mass scale. But for now, here's the spec sheet for the three working chips that we're testing today. The 9700X is hitting store shelves at 359 US dollars. AMD seems to be launching with more competitive pricing this time, rather than initially setting high prices for followed by significant cuts, as they did with the 7000 series. With current retail pricing, that makes the 9700X just a few bucks shy of the 7800X 3D and $70 more than the 7700X. All three chips sport eight cores and 16 threads, with the 9700X having the lowest base clock, yet the highest max boost clock of 5.5 gigahertz. The 7800X 3D has three times the L3 cache of the others due to its 3D V cache, which is largely what gives it its gaming advantage. The 9700X has a TDP of just 65 watts and a PPT of 88 watts, hinting at power efficiency improvements from its new Zen 5 architecture on TSMC's 4 nanometer process. This lets the new family of CPUs fit over 2 billion more transistors per CCD into the same size package than what was possible with Zen 4 on the 7000 series. The result is greater power efficiency, thermal performance, and higher instructions per clock, which are all evident in today's testing. Using an RTX 4090 Founders Edition for our test bench, the 9700X saw a peak system power draw of 5 565 watts in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p. This was an 8% reduction from the 7700X and a 13% decrease compared to the 7800X 3D. That's good news if you're doing a simple CPU upgrade from last gen Ryzen because it means that your current power supply is probably beefy enough to handle the 9700X. It also gives users a bit more headroom on their PSUs for gaming, overclocking, and other power hungry tasks. The 9700X's temperatures are even cooler, for lack of a better word. In Cinebench, it saw a max temp of 59 degrees Celsius versus 82C on the 7800X 3D and 95C for the 7700X. On average, the 9700X stayed 24 degrees cooler than the 7800X 3D and 37 degrees below the 7700X. When gaming, the 9700X reached the same peak temp of 59C compared to 76 and 67C on the 7800X 3D and 7700X respectively. With an average of 56 degrees Celsius, the 9700X also ran about 5 to 10 degrees cooler on average than the other chips. This is a huge 180 from last gen. 
Since the launch of the 7000 series, we've seen countless people freak out over their CPU temps and tons of undervolting guides to literally fix Zen 4. Somehow AMD's offhand tweet that the 7000 series was designed for a lifetime at 95C didn't reassure the masses. In hindsight, they probably should have used more emojis. The 9000 family is a refreshing change with a thermal profile that feels much closer to pre-Zen 4 CPUs. So if you don't have the budget for a top of the line cooler or you're building a small form factor system with limited cooling, the 9700X is going to be way easier to tame than these other two SKUs, and you may not even need to undervolt it. Another perk worth noting is that there might be less heat transfer to other parts of a build, like the motherboard VRM, since the CPU simply isn't producing as much heat. Despite staying cooler and using less power than the other two chips we're testing, the 9700X pulled ahead in nearly every compute workload I threw at it, with an emphasis on single core performance. In Cinebench R23, it achieved a single thread score of 2214, 11% higher than the 7700X and 21% faster than the 7800X 3D. With a multi-thread score of 2090, the 9700X outpaced the 7700X by less than 1%, while beating the 7800X 3D by 10%. In the CPU Mark single thread test, the 9700X delivered 4,687 points, a 10% lead over the 7700X, and again a 21% gain versus the 7800X 3D. For the multi-threaded run, the 9700X and 7700X returned basically the same score with a difference of just 0.05% in favor of the Zen 5 chip. Compared to the 7800X 3D, the 9700X saw a marginal uplift of about 4-5%. In the Puget Bench Adobe Premiere Pro standard test, the 9700X scored just 1.5% higher than the 7700X with a 4-5% improvement over the 7800X 3D. The new CPU saw a slightly bigger lead in Puget Bench's Photoshop test, delivering an 8% higher score than the 7700X while besting the 7800X 3D by around 12%. In Handbrake, where I timed how long it took each CPU to export a 4K video file to 1080p, the 9700X actually took slightly longer than the 7700X, which completed the task about 4% faster. The 9700X, however, did finish the job 6% faster than the 7800X 3D. So overall, when it comes to compute workloads, the 9700X delivers significantly more single thread performance than the 7800X 3D by up to 21%, with modest single digit gains in multi-thread performance. But the 7800X 3D is a gaming CPU, so it's not particularly surprising that it gets beat in areas outside of its advertised use case. What's more interesting is how the 9700X stacks up against its direct predecessor. It's more of an apples to apples comparison, since both have higher boost clocks and similar cache layouts that make them competitive in the same areas. Compared to the 7700X in my testing, the 9700X's compute performance leads by up to 11% in single-thread workloads with virtually zero gains in multi-thread performance. This isn't exactly mind-blowing, and don't get me wrong, the fact that the 9700X is faster at all while being this cool and power efficient is awesome, but it's actually too awesome. Like if I had a magic slider, I would have happily sacrificed some power efficiency in thermals for more raw performance. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of headroom on the table with this new architecture to make that happen. And I don't think AMD can say, we really wanted to prioritize power and thermals this time around, when one generation ago, they were like, a lifetime at 95C, let's go! Temperatures and heat aren't even related, bro. <sighs> but they're still gaming. To test gaming performance, I ran all titles at 1080p with that RTX 4090 FE to prevent any GPU bottlenecks. That way the CPUs are stressed fully to show their true performance. And in God of War, the 7800X 3D delivered an average of 297 FPS, a 10% lead over the 9700X at 271 FPS, and an 18% increase versus the 7700X. Compared to the 7700X, the 9700X was 8% faster on average. Interestingly, the 9700X also scored the highest 1% lows with 168 frames per second, a 25% uplift over the 7800X 3D, delivering more consistent frame times and a smoother experience. In Forza Horizon 5, the 7800X 3D saw an average of 303 FPS, putting it just 7% ahead of the competing Ryzen 7 chips which performed identically to each other within margin of error. 1% lows went to the 7800X 3D as well, scoring 206 frames per second, roughly 8% faster than the 9700X, and 10% faster than the 7700X. The 7800X 3D saw the biggest lead by far in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with an average of 344 frames per second, delivering a 34% increase over the 7700X and a 29% improvement compared to the 9700X. 
The non-X 3D parts also fell behind on 1% lows, which were 19 to 20% higher for the 7800X3D. The 7800X3D's huge performance gap is an outlier in today's tests and might indicate that Shadow of the Tomb Raider responds very well to 3D vCache as a handful of games do. Who would have thought that serious gains can be had from tripling a CPU's L3 cache? The 7800X3D returns to a somewhat modest lead in Rainbow Six Siege, with a 5% uplift in average frame rates over the 9700X. However, it still mops the floor with the 7700X by 20%. The 9700X joins in the beatings with a 15% bump on the 7700X. However, the 7800X3D displays far superior frame time consistency in this title, with its 1% lows outperforming the 7700X by 29%, and the 9700X by 14%. In Cyberpunk 2077, the 9700X delivers 216 FPS on average and is nearly matched with the 7700X, edging it out by 1-3% in average frame rates and 1% lows. But the 7800X 3D asserts its gaming dominance once more, with a 243 FPS average, running 13% faster than the 9700X. Compared to the 7700X, the 7800X 3D's 1% lows are 14% higher, while being 10% higher than the 9700X. Combining all the games, we can see that the 9700X is a touch faster than the 7700X, with 8% higher 1% lows and a 7% increase in average frame rates. Meanwhile, the 7800X 3D's 1% lows outperform the 7700X by 18% and the 9700X by 9%. On average, the X3D chip also delivers 20% more frames than the 7700X and 11% higher frame rates than the 9700X. While the 7800X 3D is still the undisputed gaming king of CPUs, the 9700X isn't too far behind and surpasses its compute performance, making it the most well-rounded contender of the three chips. The 7800X 3D will probably retain its gaming title until Intel launches their 15th gen Rocket Lake family at the end of this year, assuming it's not an absolute disaster. While AMD has yet to announce any 9000 X 3D SKUs, there's a good chance those are coming too, most likely as a response to Intel's next gen lineup. Quickly breaking down each chip's value proposition using current retail pricing, the most bang for the buck goes to the 7700X, offering 8.2 frames per dollar. Despite being the gaming king, its high price puts the 7800X 3D in second place with 7.5 frames per dollar. With mere single-digit percentage gains, but a much higher price tag than the 7700X, the 9700X finishes last with 7.1 frames per dollar, offering the least value for gaming. So, how do we distill all the information I just dumped on you? Well, if you already have a 7000 series CPU, there's little point in upgrading to 9000 unless you need a big jump in thread count, like uh, going from a Ryzen 5 to a Ryzen 9, for example. But if you're upgrading to AM5 from an older platform or simply building a new system from scratch, which of these Ryzen 7 chips should you get? In my opinion, serious gamers should choose the 7800X 3D because it's still the gaming champ and similarly priced to the 9700X. The 7700X makes a lot of sense for non-gamers because you can get very close to the 9700X's compute performance for $70 cheaper. As a result, the 9700X seems to be suited for those split right down the middle who value gaming and compute workloads equally. And while I don't think its performance alone is worth $70 over the 7700X, the superior power efficiency and thermals on top of those gains certainly is. Probably not for everyone, but definitely for some. Where I find the 9700X most compelling though is in thermally constrained scenarios, like small form factor builds, if you have passive cooling restrictions, or if your PC is in a warm environment. For example, of the three CPUs today, the 9700X would absolutely be my first choice to go in something like my four liter Velka Pro build. The 9700X puts a lighter load on the Flex ATX PSU and is far less likely to overheat with the small cooler. Since I use the build for work and play, the 9700X also strikes a great mix of compute and gaming performance. I honestly think the 9000 series is gonna be a huge hit with the small form factor enthusiast crowd, especially once the X3D parts come out, but those will likely be super popular with gamers in general. But that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Stay tuned for the rest of my 9000 series coverage coming real soon, and let me know what you think of these chips so far. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you for watching this video, and I will see y'all in the next one.